Hi, welcome to another exciting Unity video with me, Romy Fauzi. First, I'd like to apologize. It's been a while since I've uploaded a video, but it was quite a busy month since mid of October because I got a quite hefty project to work on up to December. And hopefully now I will be able to go back to the normal schedule for uploading video. In this video, I'm going to show you a new add-ons or plugins from the Asset Store called Anim Helper. But before we jump into the tutorials, if you want to learn how to create a game from scratch to a complete game, check out my online Unity courses. I've published a couple of courses covering best practices in game development with topics ranging from programming to visual tuning, desktop to a mobile platform, object-oriented programming, and many other useful tips. With the price of a takeaway, you'll get lifetime access to the course. Link in the description below. Anim Helper. It is a quite useful small tools here. And here in this new project, I've already import the assets. And we can access this here under the tools script boy. And it has this Anim Helper window. And I'm going to show this window in a bit. But right now, let's just set up the scene. So this tool will help us create animations much easier and it can show a curve of a movement of an object and this will help immensely when animating an object translation. So now let's just create a new 2D object, sprite, and I'm going to pick a random sprite here. So let's just pick this box one here. Okay, so now we have this. And as usual, if we want to create an animation, we need to select the game object. Let's just rename this first. Let's just call this a box. And if we want to create an animation, we need to open the animation window. So I'm going to go to the animation window here and let's create a new animation. And let's just call this bouncing box. And let's save this. Okay, so now let's just create a custom animation here. Let's start from this position. And let's just enable the auto key here, the record button. And I'm going to go to this frame here and then start animating. And go back here and then and then create something like this. Okay, so now we have this movement here, right? But as you can see here, if we play this animation, the default animation, it has a curve or a ease and ease in or ease out motion here that makes whenever it starts to land, it become much slower. So it is like the object is controlled. It's not natural. So if we want to create a bouncing movement, you can just probably select this properties here and then go to the curves and then modify the curves here. But with this tool here, Anim Helper, it is going to be much easier as you can see the trajectory in the scene editor here. So now let's just open the tools here, go to the script boy and then press Anim Helper and this will open the window here and I'm going to put this to the side here. And as you can see here, now once we open the Anim Helper window, if we select the box game object, you see that we have this curve here. And now we can adjust this curve. So if we want to customize the tangent of the point here, we can just select the key here and then right click and then change the tangent. You can change only the left, the right tangents or the both tangents. And in this case, I'm going to change the both tangents to three. And now once we change this, you cannot see anything here. But if we enable the edit checkbox under the box game object here, and we also need to enable the edit mode here. Once we enable the edit mode here, we can see the tangent. And I'm going to increase the handle size, currently set to 0.08. And let's just increase this so we can see it better. And now we can adjust this curve here. Okay, so let's just create a bouncing motion where the box start loose its momentum here. So here in the second position, we need to adjust the position or we can just drag this out of the way and then move this point here. And as you can see, it's very easy to adjust your animation with these tools here. So now we have this and now whenever we hit the ground, we want to create a fast motion so we can just drag this. But as you can see, if I drag this fast, this one become too slow. So if you want to only drag one of the handles, you can hold control and then drag, click and drag and you can adjust the left side of the tangents. And if we hold control again, we can adjust the right side here and we can create a bouncing motion like this. And for this here, 
we can also adjust the position so it's distribute nice among these two high points here and we can select this and we can check which key is that okay it's this one so let's just select this key here and then right click and then change the both tangents to free and now we have this Bezier control so I'm going to hold control and then make sure that this looks something like this and for this point here I'm going to align the Y position and let's just also align this here and for the last key I'm going to set the both tangents also to free and we should be able to adjust this okay I'm going to adjust this one here and then hold control and then and let's just adjust this position here and if we want to we can also change this one tangents to free so we will have access to the Bezier control and for the first one let's just also change the tangents to free here and if we drag this you see that we have access to the tangent and now we have a very nice bouncing motion okay so let's play this okay there you go so as you can see here it's very easy to create animation because you have some sort of visualization regarding the trajectory or the curve for the movement of the object and you can adjust its tangent and this also works well with a group of objects so for example i'm going to disable this object here and let's just create an empty game object and I'm going to center this out and let's just call this circles and for the circles I'm going to add a child game object here so let's just add a 2d sprite here and let's add a this one circle this circle here and let's just change the scale to 0.5 so it's smaller so we have bigger screen estate to animate this object here and this is the first child and let's just create a multiple child Okay, so now we have three child here if we select the parent game object let's create the animations for it and let's just call this multiple child and now with this created we can start the record button and let's create an animation so let's just create animations where we are going to move this round like so And now once we've created the animation here you can see that we can it uh, we can I think we can create a loop here we should be able to create a loop. let's just create here and once I've enabled the edit option I can enable the loop and this will close the curve here and as you can see we have a nice round movement so let's select all of the key here and then right click and then press the both tangents and select the free ones here and now we will be able to modify this curve here so let's just create a nice circle motion here and let's just make the handler smaller so we can see the curve better and with this we can adjust the positioning so we have a very nice round or circle motion and now uh, let's select the other game object and let's create a different kind of movement here let's create a square movement and if we press edit here you see that we can loop this option okay uh, I'm going to undo this and then let's just go to this keyframe the last keyframe and go to the first position And enable the loop option here now once we have this set up let's just adjust the last position so we have a nice circle rotation and for this one here let's just create a triangle motion and let's just press edit and then press loop okay so now we have three motion here as you can see and now with this motion here let's say we want to scale the positioning or the curve here we can just enable the transform group here and then we can 
adjust the pivot here by moving the pivot and this will be the pivot whenever we are doing transformation changes on this uh, curve here so for example if we set the pivot to this object here then we want to try to scale here there you go if I scale on the middle here we are scaling the motion as you can see the curve gets bigger and now if we play the animation the object will conform to the new curve that the transform has been modified so we have a much longer path and if it's too fast you can always select the keyframe here and then expand the keyframe for example to one second so this will make the object slower than before and as you can see here but whenever we scaling the object the curve this one here if we disable the transform group the handle change so we need to adjust this if we want to create a perfect circle okay yeah something like that and another thing that we can do is we can change the curve draw mode to advance here and you will be able to see the speed of the object with this colorization here and here the yellow usually means that the object is slowing down and the red one means that the object is going faster so for example in this triangle line here the first segment of the movement it is from the first frame up to this half second here so it's slightly yellowish but the next segment it's much shorter it's only 15 frames so it's colored red here and also the rest of the motion and if you press play you see that it's slow and then it's faster so if you want to inspect the speed of the movement of the object you can change the curve to advance here so yeah this is all you can do with the anim helper add-ons and it is available now in the asset store and i'm going to put the link in the description and as usual it's going to be an affiliate link so if you buy this asset through that link it will help my channel tremendously but the price will be the same so don't worry about it and if you find this useful i think it's worth to buy so yeah thanks a lot for watching if you like this video hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe and feel free to leave any comment below here see you in the next video